Good morning. We greet you again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Maj H. Gilbert Sr. We are broadcasting from On the Wall E Ministries here in Gladys, Virginia, 411 Gilbert Lane. We are broadcasting our second service from our new broadcast center and our new shop here in of uh, Alta Vista Church Supply. We're moving our business to our home and our ministry and our outreach center. We thank God for you joining us this morning. We have a beautiful lesson this morning, November the 3rd, out of our King James Version of our Standard Commentary, Confidence in God's Shepherding. Confidence in God's Shepherding. Uh, today, we're going to be studying out of the 23rd Psalm this morning. I think we preached out of that a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, the 23rd Psalm. Uh, we, as we study this morning, as we get to our lesson, we want to look at our lesson aims this morning as we study. And as we study this morning, our lesson aims is to be able to identify uh, the poetic repetition there in Psalm 23 and the significance of it. And then compare uh, the psalmist's description of the shepherd with the New Testament descriptions of the ministry of Jesus. Then create a reminder in Psalms 23, most helpful encouragement for the up and coming holiday season. So as we study this morning, worship in the covenant community. Our lesson is confident in God's shepherding. November the third, lesson 10 out of our King James Version. If you are using uh, any other literature other than uh, Union Gospel Press, you can follow on with us this morning. If not, Psalm 23 out of our uh, King James Bible. Our scripture read this morning, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He uh, restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, even in the presence of mine enemies. My cup run, thou runneth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, our key text this morning, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's get into our introduction this morning. Uh, needy creatures. Uh, when uh, my spouse and I became parents, I remember the trepidation we felt. It seemed that I had never beheld such helpless creature as our daughter. Nearly all that could be uh, was to do and eat and sleep. And I would sit by her uh, sleeping form and waiting and watching her breath to move her tiny chest in and out. And I marveled as we began uh, life in this manner. Only means of communication was a whimper or a yell. Humans have long period of development compared to other living creatures. We enter into the world entirely dependent upon others and remain for several years. And time passes and we envision ourselves becoming more uh, proficient at addressing our needs. The truth of it is many parts of our lives are not easy to control. Our circumstances, our environment, our health, and for instance, we also can control the uh, cannot control the people that are around us. Mm -hmm. And when we do not get our way, it's easy to be able to slip into some type of childhood self and the one who cries out for attention who needs are not met. In the psalm, this com uh, found comfort in letting God meet their needs. In our lesson context this morning, we know that uh, uh, then uh, we know less than we uh, would like to know about where the Psalter where where he was assembled. And there's clearly a consideration given into the arrangement of the 150 Psalms. And it's frequently noted that they are arranged into five books. And the first four, which conclude with a man, meaning yes, we agree and true. And the connection of David is apparent to the half of the Psalms, and the name that appears in the superscription of 73 of them, and two more attributed to him in Acts 425 and Hebrews 4 and 7. Superscriptions are instructions or attributions appearing at the beginning of those songs, and superscriptions also are part of our text. Although modern Bibles uh, give them uh, no verse number, 
the Bible software gives them a number zero. Although many superscriptions list one or more names, the relationship of the name person to the song in view is often unclear. Today's text is an example. The superscription reads a psalm of David. They may indicate that David was the author, and by Hebrew uh, preposition, preposition uh, uh, is behold that, uh, that the English word of, of can also express relationship or direction. And this means that Psalm 23 could have been about David or even dedicated to him. And David first appears in the scripture as the keeper of the sheep in 1 Samuel 16 and 11. And during the war of the Philistines, he continued uh, to be responsible for the care of his father's flock. And that may seem to have been safe, uh, behind the lines kind of a job, but in the role of a shepherd, David had to fight both lion and bear. Uh, just to stop there for a minute, I was listening to a preacher this weekend. He said David would not have never been able to face the giant if he hadn't already faced the lion and the bear. See, sometimes God takes you through some preparation for the greater mission that is ahead. So that bear and that lion uh, gave uh, confidence to David that he could accomplish anything if God was on his side. Amen. You know, it's also relevant to note that shepherding is a common metaphor uh, in the ancient Near East and used especially for kings who protect and provide for their subjects. And this goes a long way to help explain the depiction of David. His introduction as a shepherd in 1 Samuel guides readers to anticipate that he would make a good king. And that was an important development uh, for when the Israelites first as uh, Samuel for a king, they uh, uh, looked at the wishes of God to have a king that was great, of great stature and great size. But God nevertheless redeemed the monarchy and made an everlasting covenant with David, uh, which was not uh, of great stature like Saul was. And anything either by or about David is therefore important to consider when we are reading uh, anything about a shepherd. So our text today talks about God's shepherding. Uh, Psalms 23 verses 1 through 4 uh, provides. He says in the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He introduces uh, a reversal where David has been a shepherd himself. He says now that God is his shepherd. He understood the necessity of having a shepherd to guide and to protect the sheep. Amen. So David understood that in his own personal life, that God was his shepherd. Yes. And then he realized that when God is his shepherd, uh -huh. he will provide him everything that he needed. Yeah. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall Come not on. want. Don't See, want God that. gives us everything that we have need of. That's but he also says in the scriptures, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Sure if the did. desires of your heart is in alignment yeah. with the purpose that he has for your life. That's but so. he'll also give you what you don't want when you ask for it. See? Because sometimes God gives you what you ask for when you don't need it Come on. so that you can be able to understand that those things are not what you put your trust in. See? I put my trust in God. I trust that he is able to supply everything that I have need of. So whatever you need, uh, God is already ready to supply that need and then a good shepherd does this, doesn't it? Yes, uh, yes. But a bad shepherd is far away from uh, supplying your needs mm -hmm. because he's looking out for his own good. Yes, but God is not a distant shepherd. He's a shepherd that is what? Always oh, near yes, us yes. and always there to be able to help us when we have need. Verse 2 says that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me beside still Steel waters. waters. So wow. here he maketh me to lie down in green pastures means that God provides. Ain't it right? Yeah. Not only does he provide, he provides you the best. He lie down in what? Green yeah. pastures. That means what? abundance, it, yes, promotion, yes. and uh, it means that you have everything that you have in need of to operate, but not only your needs, man, you're uh, at the top of the scale, or you're on the top shelf when you have, what, green pastures, yes. and then he says, he leadeth me beside still, still. waters, 
the quietness, the peaceful that comes with still waters. I know rapids run, and rapids water means that there are danger, but sometimes uh, still water means there is deep water. But here he said that you lead me beside those still waters that are, are, are peaceful waters. There is no danger in those waters. Yeah. And so he leads us there. See, while sheep has the ability to survive without water for up to seven days, they are likely consume significant amount when their opportunity arises. The imagery of still waters usually sense that the flowing water of a river or stream is preferred image for needs that are met. But at least two interpretations of still waters is one that God can steal the water, can't he? Mm -hmm. God steal waters mm -hmm. means that he puts it in a place where there is no danger. Yes. Even in running water, in rapids water, it, God can what steal the water. When yes. the children of yes. Israel came into the Red Sea, we don't know whether it was rapid water or running water, yes. but God, by his word, he told Moses to hold up the staff mm -hmm. and he what? He steal the waters. So God will steal the waters in your life. If you're having difficulty, you're having trouble, you're having hard time making it, God can quiet that moment in your life. He can bring still waters in your life mm -hmm. to bring you into a place of peace and comfort. Amen. So here he tells us, and uh, he restores. So uh, verse 3 said, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. So he, he restores my soul. The psalmist is calm and untroubled as God's provision for his needs are being met. See, sometimes when you're going through life, even while your needs are being met, that you are still tense, you're still worried, you're still weary. But God can bring peace and he can restore peace to your soul. Amen. He said he restored my soul. He brings peace to his soul. And then he leads him into a path of righteousness uh, for his name's sake. Yeah. That path of righteousness is talks about uh, uh, imagine forks on a road and, and when the fork is encountered, you have to choose which way to go. Uh, we were at our high school reunion just past a weekend and and my, my English teacher, Miss Shaw, and, and Miss Mosby, and my science teacher, uh, Miss Dixon, was there. And I remember uh, learning the poem in the literature is uh, Robert Frost, Two Roads Diverged in the Yellow Wood. He said, Two Roads Diverged in the Yellow Wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and look down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. It says, Two Roads Diverged in the Wood, and I. I took the one less traveled by. See, when God takes us yeah. into a situation, he puts you in the path where there's a road that leads to righteousness, yeah. but there is also a road that leads to uh, evil and unrighteousness. Yeah. So here he said, he leadeth me in the path yeah. of righteousness. Yeah. When I get to that crossroad, God will give me the yeah. understanding yeah. and wisdom yeah. And the forward hall to be able to take the right turn. Yes, so Lord. he lead me in a path of righteousness. Not for my sake. For his, for his name's sake. Is to give him glory. And then he tells us about his protection. He said, yea, though I walk through. the valley, That should get us shouting right there. Yeah. When he walks through the valley of the yeah. shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Uh, he, he attributes this now, emphasizing the protection side of God's shepherding. He will not only take us uh, uh, in life, but he'll take us through life, ain't he? Yes. God will bring you in life, but he'll take you through life. Yes, Here he he'll take you yes, through yes. the valley of the shadow yes. of death. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all look at it. He didn't say he'll take you through the valley of death. He'll take you through the valley of the shadow of death. See, death is not fearful. What's fearful of death is the shadow of it, the coming of death. Mm -hmm. My pastor told me, uh, death is quick, but dying takes a long time. Yeah. So dying is that shadow of death. Yeah. The shadow of death is, is a weak body, a weak mind, a feeble body, a feeble mind, sickness and disease, all of that come in. Those are the what? Shadows yeah. of death. But he'll, he'll allow us to walk what? Through mm -hmm. the valley of the shadow of death. 
See, what we don't realize is through means that we're on the other side. You came in your your uh, situation, yeah. but God is able to get you what? Through, through your situation. Yeah. And then while you're there, you have that confidence. Our lesson says confidence. We have the confidence that I will what? Fear no evil, yep. for thou art what? With yep. me. We have God beside us all the time, and he's with us, and he'll be there for us if we would put our trust in him. But we got to trust him. Mm -hmm. And then he tells us in part B of that, he says, for thy rod and thy That's staff, that. they comfort me. Come on. Something wrong with that. Come on. Rod and staff. Uh, or, or, or have two different meanings. Yeah. Uh, when when you're dealing with sheep, the rod and the staff is what helps to keep the sheep in alignment. Yeah. When the sheep caught running off, you catch the staff and you can grab the sheep by the leg and and pull it back. That's the hook on the shaft mm -hmm. on, on the staff. So mm -hmm. he said that the rod and that staff they comfort him. I know that you're there to keep me from being in danger. Yeah. If I run off, yeah. you'll catch me and bring yeah. me back. Yeah. You'll comfort me and make sure everything is all yes. right. But also, when I was raised up, the rod and the staff was punishment. Come on. The rod and the staff, uh, he says, spare not the rod. Ain't Come on. It? So rods are also disciplinary. Yes. When you bring you into alignment, when God has his rod and the staff, brings you into alignment, that is not punishment. That is what you call chastisement. Chastisement is different than punishment. Yes. Punishment is something that you're doing without purpose. Yes. Uh, chastisement means that I am uh, punishing you with a meaning that you will learn yes. from what the things that you had done wrong. Come so on. God will comfort us even though he what? Chastises yes. us at times. Yes. And then the Lord supplies uh, Psalm 23 and 5 said, Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Yep. See, your enemies are looking for you to uh, to fail. Your enemies are looking for you to uh, to, 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 to feel like you're hopeless. Yep. But here he said, You will prepare my full table in the presence of yep. mine enemies. So while those that are trying to destroy me, those that are trying to uh, put me down, they see my table overflowing. <laughs> they see me living large. They Stand see me up. living in, 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 in abundance of your word, abundance of yes. your blessings. And yes. then he said, you prepare that in front of them. Let them know that whatever you're doing, it's not stopping what God is doing in my yes, life. Sir. So you, 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 I'm preparing hey. a table to let you know that God is doing this. Yes, See, is. God is not showing us off. He's showing himself off. Yeah. When we uh, put our trust in God, mm. he will hold us up even in the presence of our enemies. Yes, he, he says is. in part B that he anointed my yeah. head with oil. Yes, I think we said it a couple of weeks ago in our text. When you put oil over an uh, animal's head is the fact that it get rid of the uh, flies that's in his nose, in his eyes, and in his ears. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. He, he anointed my head with oil so that the devil won't mess with my eye gate. <laughs> he won't mess with my ear gate. Nope. He won't mess with my nose. He, he really mm -hmm. he covers all of my senses. Yeah. Man, right? But the oil is what, what keeps the, uh, the f fleas from laying eggs. The fleas and flies lay eggs in the nose, in the ears, and in, in, in the uh, eyes of those sheep. Mm -hmm. But the oil will prevent the animals from being able to come in and lay their eggs. They try to lay the eggs, they stick and won't get into the eye. Yeah. So sometimes the devil uh, try to get into our life and God has that anointing yes, over us yes. with his all of mercy, yes, see, his all yes. of grace. See, all back then represented real uh, oil, which had myrrh and spikenard and other spices in it that were healing of the nation, healing. Yes. But what God does, he anoints us with the oil of his spirit, yes. the oil of his grace, yes. the oil of yes. his mercy. And he anointed us with oil. And, and then he said, our cup runneth over. Yep, so that yep. means that when he, see, <laughs> we, we, we buy and we sell anointing oil in our store. We sell it in a little bottle. And you take a little on your finger. And do, that, we don't know what the method is. 
See, the message here was he poured oil over the shepherd's sheep's head. And, and that cup, the oil ran over. And when the oil ran over, they could catch the other oil. See, so God gives us more than we need. Because yes, our cup, what? Run it up. It runneth over. Run and it runneth over. So God promised us that we will have more than we need so that we can become a blessing to somebody else. That's See, God like just didn't give you enough for yeah. you so that you can take care of you. There. God gave you more so that you can now represent the image and the likeness of him. That's See, right. God That's provides. Right. So now he gives us that you and I can be in the image and likeness of him, and we provide. Yeah. So God provides That's because up. of the fact that he is God, yeah. and he will give us more than we need Tell our cool. cup. Running over. Running over. And then the psalm of the future, accompanied by his blessings in verse 6, he says, surely. Huh. And that word? Yeah, surely, goodness remember and mercy. Remember yeah. I said, the all of goodness and mercy mm -hmm. shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. He says, surely, goodness and mercy. So he's mentioned it twice. Uh, mentioned hardship, danger in Dark Valley, enemies sighting at the host table. And if Psalmist feels that he is being chased by death and evil, mm. then he imagines that God's goodness and God's mm. mercy will pursue him all the more. And it's insightful that in God's character, we see how the two Hebrew words are translated Goodness and mercy uh, is it in our text today. And then he says, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The final is providing the fitting conclusion of our text today. The vividly depicts God nearness to us. The psalmist shared a table with God and, and expected to remain at that table forever, living in his abundance. Yeah. He did not expect to be shown the door, a house for any uh, God in the ancient Near East was a temple. But in David's lifetime, God had no temple. Mm -hmm. And he denied permission for David to build him a temple. Yeah. The fact of history points to the house of the Lord is being his heavenly dwelling. He said, I will dwell in the presence of God forever. forever. Mm -hmm. Not in the house of God. See, he said that uh, brick and mortar are going to fade away. But him, his dwelling place is forever, ain't it? Forever. So we got to understand that we have a resting place. So we can be in that confidence and know that God is able and we can trust in him that he will guide us, direct us, and be our shepherd even through these times that we're living in today. Yeah. So our conclusion is needed for God. Psalm 23 is short, only six verses. But contrast 150 psalms in total, about 16 verses each. But the influence of Psalm 23 is not limited to its length. The striking elegance of how the psalm uh, begins results in the, how many Christians are memorizing its opening line easy and effortless. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. However, if we limit ourselves uh, to the opening line, we miss out on the second important image of the psalm that the Lord, the God of hosts, of course, it would be strange to imagine a, a sheep dining at their tables. Mm -hmm. It is a poetic text in the justification of metaphors, enhancing the meaning in two images that God is shepherd and God is our host. It's co collectively portrayed that the Lord is caring and thoughtful toward his people. Yeah. And what a psalm this proclaim is more radical than readers typically grant. We live in a world where food and drink were not always easy to find. Yeah. He saw enemies uh, behind every corner of the yeah. road, not for the sense of a paranoia. Nevertheless, he trusted that he was loved and remembered by God. He saw that God was with him, yeah. satisfying all of his needs. That's and the up. same can be said for us today. We place Psalm 23 in our hearts. And by meditating on it, and we can be encouraged to present our everyday needs to God, yeah. expecting trust and Him to honor our desires. God yeah. is righteous and He is faithful. Yeah. However, the psalm could be uh, misapplied if taken to endorse laziness or blind optimism. 
God provided for David's every need, but David remained in the wilderness for a long time, didn't he? Yeah. He was fleeing from men who wanted to murder him at every turn. He must have wondered whether he was on the right path that God had provided. Yeah, yeah. His faithful reliance was tested by desperate, constant, rather, circumstances rather than a mere inconvenience. Mm -hmm. Thus, Psalm 23 can speak clearest to those who genuinely don't know where the next meal is coming from uh, and in real and present danger yeah. of being victimized. Yeah, but uh, whether the scenario or the looming challenge of a figurative wilderness or a risk of wealth or reputation or loss or something, Psalm 23 is ready to speak to you wherever your need is. Yes, God is able he to is speak able. to you. So our prayer today yes, is Heavenly yes. Father, we thank you for your presence yes. and your provisions astound us. Yes. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, that set us as an example yes. to trust as he paid sin's price. Yes. We pray it in his precious name. Let us all say Amen. Amen. So our thought to remember this morning is God has provided and is providing and will yeah. provide. God bless yes, you. So. May heaven ever smile upon you. Yes, we'll be so. back in a minute uh, with yes, our, so. our worship hour. And we just thank God for all of you. God bless you. And may heaven ever smile upon you. Mm-hmm.